Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delisio with another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing and today we're going to be taking a look at quite a large game. Here we've got War Room and the Jumbo Pack expansion and just to give you a sense of scale, here's a small card game. That should give you a bit of an idea of what size of boxes we're looking at here. So I'm going to start off by looking at just this base game of War Room and then I'll pop open the Jumbo Room expansion box. We'll see what's inside this large scale game from Larry Harris of Axis and Allies fame. It is from uh, two to six players and it says about an hour per person. So you're looking at between a two to six hour game. There will likely be a tremendous number of components in this game. So I will not spend a lot of time on it. Just kind of give you a sense of what's in the box. All right, here we go. As you can see, there's no artwork on the back of the box. It has already actually started opening a bit. We'll finish the job there. Okay, well. I think we're starting to get a sense for the scope and the scale of what we have here. This is the map, which is modular and massive. You might say it's massively modular. I just did. Okay. I'm going to, I don't know if it's going to be really feasible to put the map together right now. But I think what I want to do is just give you a sense for kind of how it comes together and give you a sense for what is on the map. All right, here we go. So you can see it's going to be this massive circular map. And I don't think, yeah, you can see the lettering, the lettering system will kind of give you an idea of how this is put together. I'm just going to probably show you the parts of the map again, rather than trying to put this map together, which would be challenging on camera to even actually get it all seen. You can see here the different parts of this map. Incredibly large. All right, well now I'm starting to feel like I wanna <laughs> try to get a sense. Yeah, so you can kind of see how this is all put together, at least a little bit. You've got this, and then if you were to rotate it around, you'd have this coming in right here. All right, you get, I think, a pretty good sense for the size and the scope of this map, what it looks like, the functionality of it. It does look to be quite detailed and looks like there's plenty of room for placing units, which I imagine would be a pretty significant part of what you're doing in the game. All right, it looks like we've got some trackers of some type for the different factions, countries involved. Got Japan and Germany and the States. I'm not going to try to go through all these. You can just get a sense for, it looks like these punch out in some way or perhaps fold up. I'm not going to try to do that just because I don't want to damage something just based off of ignorance. So here's the rule book. Okay. It's not as thick and imposing of a rule book as I actually expected just upon opening the box. So we'll just take a quick flip through here and you can see the game components and it shows the large scale map there, those tracking uh, sheets, which we were just looking at. 
The objective, seven nations struggle to control key territories and critical resources before the stress and devastation of war drains them of their ability to wage war. All right. Unless otherwise stated in the chosen game scenario, the Allied forces must control both Greater Germany and Japan to win. The Tripartite Pact Alliance, or Axis, must control two of the following to win. The Eastern U.S., Great Britain, or Moscow. All right, so you got your components there. More of the components along with the land, air, and naval units. You've got the world map features. A large section based on setup showing you how you're going to set this up. And as you might expect in a game like this, which plays so long, uh, with, with such a massive scope, the setup is a pretty involved process. That, that makes sense. And then it looks like we're going in phases here. Phase one, you've got direct the national economy. Phase two, you've got strategic planning, and there are steps within all of these. All right. You still have your, str your strategic planning here, which is plotting land commands and transporting land units by sea and plotting air and naval commands. And then in uh, phase three is your movement operations. Flip the embattled hotspots, resolve movement in turn order, the carrier fighter movement, and a whole lot of specific examples being shown on how movement works within the game, which I'm sure is quite helpful. Phase four, combat operations, which in a war game is certainly going to be a huge part of the game. And it does look like this is a fairly involved process to handle combat and battles. You've got different types of combat raids and battles, convoy raids, strategic bombing raids, the battle debrief. You can see uh, most of the rule book is devoted to combat. Phase five is refit and, re and, excuse me, and deploy where you have land air commands, deploying units, reorganizing commands, and then you've got the morale in phase six. And in phase seven is production. You've got more aspects of the game, the Soviet, Japanese pact, the neutrals, the war room scenario. So this can be where you're playing different scenarios. It looks like there are four scenarios there. And it goes war in Europe, war in the Pacific, and the Eastern Front, optional rules, a summary, and some designer notes and a session log at the back reference sheets for the players which as you might expe expect is probably quite important here's a kind of a shrunk version of that massive map the different phases of the game that we've just kind of talked about briefly this will be the center of the map where you've got the turn order and then what looks to be the different phases of the game. This would go kind of in the middle area of that map. All right, here we go. More. Let's get the units out of the way here. We've got the morale board with our casualty list, casualty values per unit. These are double-sided, as you can see here. Looks like we've got our different types of units, our Axis and Allied units. Again, double-sided. These are thick cardboard. We've got some sticker sheets here, which I imagine are going to be going on to units. And then here we've got our Air, Axis and allies, Allied Air units. And our Naval, Axis and Allied Naval units. All right, I'm going to have to go more quickly. This is here. You can see plastic infantry unit. These are kind of what I would imagine are taking the place of what were would commonly be um, cardboard chits in, in uh, standard war games, but this is certainly a deluxe version of a game. Here we've got our armor and artillery. I can just show you those to give you a sense. They're plastic. Okay. Our ships, battleships, carriers, cruisers, and submarines. You can see those there. Plastic. And our air units, our bombers, and our fighters. These are circular discs. Again, plastic. And they're able to be stacked. So clearly, you'll be stacking units, um, which 
although I am not a war gamer, I believe is relatively standard in war gaming. So we take a look at some of these other pieces within the game. These are actually cardboard, but they are remarkably thick. Okay, uh, I think you can get a sense on camera for how thick these cardboard chits are. Uh, they are not standard thickness. They are certainly above standard thickness. These are more very thick cardboard chits. And I'm not going to go over all of these. I, I just, the amount of time is already going to be very long. I just want to give you a sense for some of the things that you're going to have in the box. Some more cardboard tokens. These are plastic and these are going to be where you're placing stickers. Uh, you, I, you saw those sticker sheets a moment ago. These are going to be some things that you need to sticker. They're plastic discs and shapes that you will sticker up. More of those in a different color. So either Axis or Allies. I'm not sure which. White neutral, I would imagine. Although I'm not sure of that. Black sticker. Need to be stickered. Multiple colors that need to be stickered different units. Okay. More super thick cardboard chits with the different countries represented there. Some just colors. More plastic pieces that need to be stickered. All right, let's see. We've got the different countries here, and I'm just going to probably show one or two to kind of give you an idea of what these do. These are going to have your movement limits for your units, your movement operations, military production. All right, which again, there's a whole lot of double sided sheets of these for each of the countries involved Germany, the United States. the Soviet Union, Imperial Japan, the British Commonwealth, and Sin, and the Kingdom of Italy. I apologize if I mispronounced one or more of those. It is very possible and likely I did so. We've got some custom dice here. These are engraved custom dice. And now they are everywhere. I'll get those cleaned up really quickly because we've got more to look at just in this base box. So many things. Here we've got large wooden screen printed tokens that will be placed upon the board. We've got pegboards, which I'm assuming are going to be placed wooden pegboards that are or no plastic. Let me let me get a couple of these just to make sure. Actually, these have to be open opened, but yeah, they feel plastic to me. They are indeed plastic. Okay. And then our stars. Let's take a look at one of these. Okay, so here you can see the pegboards where those plastic pegs, very, very thick cardboard where you'd be putting the pegs and then spaces for those units once they've been stickered, I imagine. I'm just going to show you this one because they're all going to be the same, but just with the different countries represented. And then finally, we've got some cards. And by some, I mean a whole lot. So we'll flip through those. All right, I'm going to do these just in stacks so you can kind of get an idea. Here we see the eastern United States with some coordinates, I would imagine, from the map, perhaps there. I obviously do not know what these other icons and symbols represent. I'm sure it's covered in depth in the rule book. And you've got different unit orientations there. 
So I'll just kind of flip through some of these cards so you can get an idea of them. Germany, Bulgaria, Romania, the Baltic states, Tunisia. These cards are all quite good quality. They are the mini, kind of the mini sized cards there. These appear to have perhaps stock footage of actual historical events, places. All right, I'm just going to give you a snapshot of the many, many cards involved here. sure these are staying in in the frame and in focus okay I think you have an idea of the types of cards that we've got within the game all right well that is this massive first box of war room for the time being I'm gonna toss these things in here so we can take a look at what's in this second almost equally large sized box which is the Jumbo Pack Expansion. And see what that has to show us. Again, the back doesn't really give us any indication or glimpse. So we'll have to look what's on the inside and find out. Aha! Well, the first thing I see is a massive <laughs> neoprene version of that map. So, while this will not be able to be represented all on camera, I will at least show you some of it so you can get an idea. It's pretty bright and vibrant. Um, Seems to be very good quality neoprene mat. The printing looks to be very clear, very easy to read. What's on this? Sometimes with these neoprene mats, I find that you can get a little bit uh, blurry and hard to make out, but this looks to be very well done and easy to discern what you need to see on the mat. Here we've got some very thick cardboard glossy versions of what are on those paper sheets, I believe, in the main box. My guess is that this is dry erase, so that that way you don't have to worry about it. It really comes off like it's dry erase. I'm almost sure it is for all of the countries, and so therefore you don't have to use those paper pads. You can now just use the dry erase, and you are set no matter what. We've got more of those custom engraved dice different colored though i believe here we've got the center of the neoprene mat all right multiple copies of it i'm assuming that's what that is or perhaps they're coasters i don't know we've got a screen printed bag here it's relatively small i can't get my hand in there i'm not sure i would need to i'm not sure exactly what its purpose is here we've got what look to be some, I got to tell you the truth, I have no idea what these are. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, they're plastic, they're molded, and uh, there's probably an obvious purpose for them that I am not able to ascertain at the moment. Will this clue me in? My goodness, okay. This looks to be stands perhaps so maybe this is meant to be stood up I, i'm really not sure but it looks to be a number of stands so perhaps this is meant to be raised above the playing area for in some way um it's interesting and, and i'm sure it would be an incredible table presence all put together and all of these amazing 
pieces, but I am a little bit unsure exactly how that all plays out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a long, long road to take a look at War Room, a impressive game in scope, no doubt about that. Thank you for watching another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.